Salutations, Space Cadets, and thank you so much for landing back on my channel. For today's mission, we'll be going over the state of Rune Terra and seeing where uh, Laura is going to be going from here on out. And then I'll give you a little bit of a TLDR on what's going on, as well as telling you about what the future of this channel could potentially look like. Even I don't know, I'm going to be telling you at the end of the video, and then we're going to be figuring it out together, essentially. But let's get uh, for, uh, right into it, honestly. And if you end up liking the video, hey, like the video whatever subscribe if you want more news whatever um but yeah first and foremost lore is not dying um it's just going to look a little bit different from what you're going to get used to um such as and then as well as they're going to be focusing more on the path of champions content and stuff like that there's going to be a new expansion to the path of champions called constellations introducing lissandra as the next big bat after aurelian soul uh, star powers are going to be increased to six for about uh, 20 uh, champions, I believe. They said 20 new champions, but I'm assuming, I, I, but then they say things further into it made it seem like they're not 20 new champions that have never been in, in Path of Champions are getting added. I, I believe it's more so that 20 champions uh, out of the existing ones, or maybe some couple of uh, new ones are going to be upgraded to are going to be able to be upgraded to the level uh six star ranking so that's where i think they're going to go there as well um and then uh the whole failure as a region in general is going to be added along you know with lissandra as well there will be one final expansion for the pvp um and that's going to be it for the foreseeable future they will still be including um you know champions from time to time but they're going to be more so champions that are going to be more so focused on the path of champion side of things rather than making like pvp specific you know champions as well uh and as well there the draft mode is going to also be going on a hiatus they were working on it but you know after unforeseen uh circumstances they had to you know put that on the back burner they still want to do it but it's not it's not as much as a priority as it is um, it's going to take a lot of effort and things of, the, uh, of the, that nature in order for them to actually release the draft mode. That was like my favorite thing when I first started playing a game. I'm coming back after two years of not playing uh, Runeterra and draft mode was my favorite thing. And then they, they it died. So, uh, you know, that's sad. But it was it was a really good time. I mean, people were abusing it for, you know, experience and stuff like that. But, hey, I, I just enjoyed the draft mode in general. Uh, but, yeah, that's the TLDR for it. So, if you're here just for that. Okay, we'll see it, but we're going to get a little bit more into what they were speaking about, uh, read a little bit more in depth, and tell you my thoughts on uh, each thing that they're talking about. Well, not every single thing, but we're going to talk about a few um, of those things. So, um, without further ado, is Lord dying? Like you see on the screen, no, it's not dying. They're making some changes alongside larger structural changes at Riot. The intent is to focus on a better path forward for the business, the core of which it will be Path the Champions moving forward. And keep this amazing game going with a smaller, more focused team while we do that. So I believe they got downsized a little bit, you know, not too long ago, I, I heard. And then they get downsized again, it's looking like. So it's getting slashed and then slashed again. So now it's just more so of a small team at Riot working on... Uh, Legend Rune Terra, and looks like they're going to be focusing mostly on Path of Champions. Now, I mean, I'm not a super competitive person. I mean, if you've seen some of my videos, especially when I back to DC Dual Force, I'm more so like uh, focusing on like the fun decks and the meme decks, and sometimes I, I post competitive decks, but I'm mostly uh, into those things. So, Path of Champions are already fun things uh, for me in, in the first place. The only thing I'm kind of worried about with Path of Champions is I feel like it might be kind of, I don't know if people, I don't know how, how much of a presence that has on the YouTube landscape. And it's going to be kind of hard to kind of like innovate in that. Because like with, with PvP content, you can make various decks and stuff like that. And you can show people new decks that they could potentially go for. It. But like if you try to do that, this is more like a roguelike type situation. So they're not everyone's going to be able to find the exact same build that you have, rather than like like they could on PvP because you can just craft exactly the deck that they they that I'm showing you. So it's going to be a little bit hard for that. There's, you know, of course, there's like challenge runs and stuff like that. Like you know, you've seen people like Grappler and I think um, Sunny. Is that how you say Snooney? Sunny. Um, they you know do some um, challenges regarding POC, but you know by not upgrading their star levels and stuff like that. But I mean, you can't leave every champ. I, mean, I guess you can. You can leave every champ, but once you go there, you can't go back to start doing those challenges. So it gets kind of rough, but um i i don't particularly mind that they're focusing on path of champions it just sucks for all those people that really liked the pvp in the game and honestly the, that it was um a fun you know i feel like they didn't balance enough 
um, they're not going to be stopping balance updates that we're going to see further um, into this post. They're going to keep doing balance changes, but it's not or like patch notes and stuff like that. But uh, like I said, they're focusing on POC and then people they're um, you know, addressing a few questions that people may have in this frequently asked questions part. And they're like, you know, you switch, you know, your focus to PVE, but then you switch it back to PVP. And then now you're switching it to PVE again. Well, like, <laughs> what's what's up with that bro uh and basically they were saying uh you know all the announcements they were honest truth at the time that was like their truth at that time but the reality is they were just adjusting to the changing landscape of the gaming industry during each pivot and then you know they focused on pve their te uh, their team was dead set and ambitious on the mode uh and they, that it could be the f uh, future but then you know uh monetize wise they didn't really have anything there and it wasn't making them any extra money but they were paying a lot more extra effort into it as well uh, but so then, you know, they switch back to PvP, has a lot of cool, you know, they introduce gauntlets and all these various other things and gauntlet rewards and uh, whatever uh, it may be. Uh, like rank rewards, tournaments, and stuff like that. And they're just like, oh, well, we're also not making any money. Uh, and people are mostly playing Path of Champions anyway. So, okay, well, let's focus on Path of Champions once again. And, uh, it looks like they're going to be monetizing Path of Champions a little bit more. I don't know in what way they haven't really gone into detail based off that. They, I mean, there may be, you know, with relics. Maybe if you want retries, you can, you know, do some coins or whatever to do some retries. Or I, I don't know if they're going to lock expansions behind, like, a season pass or something. Like, oh, play this ex this uh, Path of Champions expansion. We have all this content for free. You'll, you'll have hours and hours for free. But if you want to start getting past that enjoy your season pass uh so that might be the case there now they haven't really said that when the set was going to release they just no answer to that honestly uh now what's happening to competitive and tournaments uh they'll keep you know casual eternal and oh uh versus ai indefinitely they're not taking that away at all uh now but when the ranked uh, the ranked version of Standard and the ranked version of Eternal will continue, but in a different structure than uh, what it is today. And then they'll be working and figuring that out soon. Like, a lot of this stuff is probably, you know, like, coming to them as an owner. They're kind of trying to let us know as they kind of find out. Because, I mean, you know how, you know, layoffs could potentially be, dude. That, that is just chaotic. They, it's just like an abrupt abrupt like ending to something that they've been working hard on for years and years and then you're just like just a, a, just like a snap you're just gone dude and i mean they have a, a pretty nice severance package um from the the pros when they talked about the layoffs at riot in general but it's still a shock and then you have to think about it. even the people that end up staying now they're working with a way less big team all that work that they they were able to divide amongst these other people now we're just going to fall into these one single people these ideas, these ambitions that they probably had, you know, that uh, like these big dreams that they probably had for the game, um, just they can't really do it because they just don't have the the manpower to do it. Um, so it, it's un it's unfortunate, especially in that sense, for the people that lost their jobs, even the people that still maintain their jobs that are really passionate about this game. It's just a sucky time. Um, Worlds pretty much not happening anymore as well. Um, uh, I hear that the ranks are uh, the world championships have a couple of months ago for Legend of Terra, but they won't be continuing for the foreseeable future. I mean, who knows what's going to happen in the future, but right now they're not going to focus on doing all that stuff. Uh, and then I want to talk about, uh, let's see, um, the mystery event. There's going to be, there was like some mystery event where they're, uh, I think flying out creators to talk about lore and like their directions going forward and what, what it should be. Um, of course, I'm too new to lore, so I wasn't invited to that that thing, um, making lore content. Um, but uh, uh, their community has always had the best part of lore, and their invitation is still a celebration of the community. We also look forward to speaking with the competitive players to see how we can best support them, even with the focus of PvE. So that maybe they're going to be, you know, going through some strategy esque meetings, like what what could they do to make this like actually provide content because. I mean, you, you've you probably, I don't know if you particularly have probably looked at various roguelike games, such as like, I don't know, Hades and, I don't know, Slay the Spire or what, what's the other one, Inscription and something like that. that you know, there's still content there, but those just feel like one and done. It's like once you do something, then you can't really do it again. The, the, another thing about, you know, PvP games is that you can, every time you queue into the game, 
even if you're facing the exact same deck that you face like 50 times in a row, it's still a different person most of the time um, that you're facing. So you're still going to get a different experience. Uh, but, you know, with Path of Champions, you know, I mean, sure, there's a couple. It's like sometimes the routes change a little bit. Like instead of uh, fighting one thing here, you might fight it there, you know, in a, in a further place. But it's still the same kind of power level as it is. So it's going to be kind of hard to innovate in that field. Um now they they actually like why don't you just sell things that people want in the first place and then people will buy them and then you know you should be profitable right forehead uh well we put off a wide range of content boards champ skins guardians emotes card banks prismatic styles uh because our core monetization thesis was to let people earn their collection and pay for cosmetics now but for sales for cosmetics has deeply uh, i mean proven deeply inadequate often costing them more then would have earned them so you know th honestly they go in on the cosmetics here like versus league of legends it it's it's kind of interesting like why league is you know still you know it's still free to play and it, it makes pretty much all their money even tft makes all their money from like cosmetics and stuff like that but for that same model didn't really work for a rune terra and it just cost more i mean yeah, these have like full on like mini cinematics, especially if you're playing against <laughs> Sharima. <laughs> you see, you see they get memed on that it's a freaking movie. Uh, and it basically is with all those uh, various animations. Then you think about the voice lines that go into things as well. Sometimes they change the voice lines based off it, different animation styles and animations. And then they update like the card art for various skins. I think at a certain tier, like Epic or Above or something. So like imagine all that and then you, you think about like the little mini models that they have to make for the guardians that's why they said they st they're going to stop making guardians and stuff like that i think i'm um, like, like a patch or two ago and so yeah it does cost a lot and i guess they're just not making enough and you know if people they re increase the prices they just probably feel like people are not going to get them and you know that's fair um but i don't know i really like the guardians i, I like their cosmic that they have in the game i haven't personally bought anything um i mean because I, I guess you know i used to buy stuff in league of legends themselves but you know like when i was you know younger but nowadays you can get a lot of skins for free so i don't even really try to buy them unless it's like specific champions that i really care about like fiora or freaking garen i just like like collecting them at that point uh essentially but i don't know i guess the same thing doesn't apply especially since you know you could buy and like now that they implemented a rotation like you could buy all these skins right and then they rotate your cards out and then sure you can still play internal and stuff like that uh but if there's like no rank season you feel like you're not incentivized to it so you kind of feel like you're not getting your you're not able to use your money so then you, you get into that conundrum so then you probably just say you know i'm not gonna buy anything else because i'm just, it could just get rotated out you know if, you know your fomo or whatever it might be now why they say well if if that's also the case they're so generous giving out these cards you're letting everyone earn them for free you know why don't you pull back a little bit on that generosity you know uh there's definitely been many conversations on how they can make this happen but at the end of the day there was no plausible approach that we could take that would come close to matching development cost it takes to produce the pvp sets we currently make without essentially becoming a traditional ccg business model oh god please do not <laughs> that is garbage and expensive uh so they want to you know keep up on their original promise to the pay uh players and uh by making this like a free-to-play you know game as much as possible focus a little bit more on the path of champions that we spoke about before um and because like like i said dude there's just so many things that, that go on into making those sets like i'm i just i'm just thinking about the voice lines dude the voice lines already those interactions those special parts like that's one of the reasons why i really like runeterra is because the characters interact with each other and it feels like a living breathing world uh but you know that costs money I call it money money. So does this mean that the game's being monetized more? Yes. Uh, it's very openly smaller now. Uh, we'll have more packages and monetization options for Path of Champions on many different levels. Uh, we want the, the game to grow and do even more cool things with Legend of Terra, but we'll need to self-sufficient to be able to responsibly pay for those cool things while we'll be listening to intently to feedback and stuff like that before it goes live. So, I mean, hey, if they try to release, like, I don't know, what, what Marvel Snap, what was that, that thing that they did, like, at the beginning of the game and like the beta of marvel snap that people absolutely hated and they eventually changed it for it um whatever that is they, they basically we don't want that um so yeah another big market that they could potentially splash into would be china apparently the runeterra does not exist in china uh but essentially they're just saying like 
they there's like a lot of things and a lot of hoops you got to go through to make games acceptable in China, whether, whether that's censorship or like, you know, mostly censorship, I think. And you just have to change a lot of different things and various licensing and uh, things. So it's just not like not worth the effort. They tried to do it and get it out when Runeterra was first coming out, but they just couldn't do it. And by that time, you know, they have so much content in there that going through that whole endeavor would just, and especially with the smaller teams, just not worth it at this point. So unfortunately, it will not be coming to China. Well, if they had it from the start, that might have been a huge market that they could have pulled into, and it maybe it would have been self-sufficient, but they just couldn't get that out in time um, at the said time. Now, why don't you release a draft mode? Come back. Uh, as we heard in the previous dev update, we spent time working on prototype of draft mode and found something that we think is fun to play and could be good at the blend of satisfying uh, to players and help uh, helpful to the business. Never say never, but it's not something we currently can devote resources to. You know, more testing is required and it also takes a, a significant amount of time and effort to bring something from prototype too shippable, which is very true. Game development is hard, all right? It ain't easy to just like, oh, well, uh, let me just uh, get a quick little Photoshop. Let me just splash this in, uh, hit a couple of numbers. Boom, you got a video game. Nah, you don't. Now, um, now they're like, why hasn't Riot like helped? <laughs> like, if the game's dying, help. Where's the advertising? Where's the promotions? What's going on? And essentially, they were saying that, well, Riot actually has been. <laughs> They've been, you know, using like the success of TFT and the League of Legends to help, you know, keep lore alive. But at a certain point, there's like you, they gotten so many handouts, so many. You know, so much help, they just have to pull back a little bit and realize, okay, well, we need to do some restructuring and, and figuring this out um, before we can, you know, proceed to move forward. So they're also going to be doing things like um, advertising Runeterra just a little bit more, it, like inside of League of Legends. Like one of the good parts about TFT is that it's already incorporated into the client of uh, League of Legends. So, you know, they'll be doing a little bit more promotions. Uh, for a Legend of Terror inside the League client, as well as, you know, combining more events from League of Legends and TFT, which will also go into uh, Legend of Terror. So that's going to be one of their strategies moving forward. Um, and they're like, why, why invest in other unreleased games instead of focusing and building up a game that you're already going through? And it's just like, hey, they did... They did a lot of that. They did a lot of investing. They really, they really tried, but they want to, you know, they've uh, got to do research and development. You got to do all these other things, propose businesses and all that, whatever jargon there is. They tried They're They still want to, you know, make some other things in the future, you know, like Project L, you know, that, that, um, that mo not MOBA, uh, the freaking, what was it called? The... The, like, like wow whatever i forgot what it was called like for some oh mmo uh like you know mmo and stuff like that so you know they, they, they gotta eventually try some new things try some new sparks that can potentially you know earn them some actual money you know for for once um and yeah like like i was saying like uh why they don't advertise lore uh essentially it's just like they 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 try to just not you know the resources just ain't worth it at this point now they're like oh well lore is joining league studios but why wasn't it before and what does that really mean league studios is fairly recent organizational change that right is not intended to be grouping of every game that uses or will use the runeterra ip but instead of a way to help games with significant overlap work better together uh for example lore and t i mean lol and tft Share a client and code base, like I was saying earlier, a lot of um, players spending some time in both games. And lore, and I don't know what WR is, not gonna lie, don't share code, but um, are very much the same overall core experience. Now, what does this mean exactly? But by having lore join the League Studios, the game will be much better integrated into the overall scope and plan of the League ecosystem, such as events, champion design insights, release cadences, and, and the like. And there's also some synergistic benefits between the games, sharing resources and eliminating duplicative elements. We can make a single release manager for all the mobile titles. For example, this helps save lower resources that can be used to make actual game stuff uh, for players instead, um, essentially. So, you know. A, the back that is fusing together can, can provide them some nice resources that can help them make better things in the future um, instead of having to you know figure it all out in themselves like they're on their little their own little like own studio inside of a studio kind of situation and um 
So we're not going to see the roadmap for a little bit. Um, they're going to be, you know, solidifying some things. Release the Freljord expansion, I believe, first uh, in Panther Champions, and then see or how that, the response is to that, and then make a roadmap uh, based on that uh, feedback. And they're basically also saying that patch notes, articles, and streams, they're going to be cutting down on streams and various articles and stuff like that, but they will still release patch notes as well to uh, keep you guys all updated on various changes and why they're making said changes. But like those extracurricular activities, they'll be um, pretty much bringing back as well. <laughs> and you know, last but not least, if, if Laura is causing you all this trouble, you're having all these struggles, why not just kill it? <laughs> why not just be like, all right, all right, we lost so much money on this. Let's just cut our losses, dude. But they love lore, you know, we've they've taken a, uh, a few big uh, swings at plans to make the game more sustainable from a business perspective by growing the player base, but that didn't work and or we found the work required was substantially beyond what the existing team could deliver. So now the plan is to match the team size and investment in sustainability uh, more closely with a dedicated player base or so forces have built over the past several years. Basically, they were saying that they're a little bit too ambitious they wanted to do a lot of things they just didn't have the team power to do so and now they're just going to realign that especially with their team size cutting down even further they're just going to rein in their ambitions to match the match the levels of what they can actually produce with the, that small team it's, it's unfortunate but it's very understandable and i wish the runeterra team all the best now where did that go for this channel in general uh, will I be focusing more on the last bit of PvP before it gets slowed down a lot more? Will I focus more so on uh, Path of Champion? Or will I try some other card games to see if we can finally find a home? Um, I don't particularly know. <laughs> I want to see if I can think of any cool ideas to do with uh, uh, Path of Champions. Let me know if you guys even want to see Path of Champions stuff. Like, if they focus to Path of Champions, are you guys just going to leave the game? Are you going to see, stick around? Are you enjoying Path of Champions? It is their most popular mode, so I'm assuming a lot of you guys do enjoy Path of Champions. I'll see if I can make some some cool ideas revolving around it. But I also want to expand, you know, this is a card gaming channel, not necessarily locked into any one particular game. Um, you know, we have the Dragon Ball Fusion World um, coming full release within the next month or two, so I might want to go into that. Really hoping that Lorcana or the One Piece trading card game comes to uh, PC so I can better stream it instead of playing these um, off-brand uh, freaking clients because I don't want to get bodied by Disney or Suecia. They're very scary companies, so I'd rather not stream those games uh, if it's not official. Um, so hopefully those come there. I will particularly want to focus on that. Um, as for the Twitch stream, so we do stream live on twitch.tv slash HNX basically. I will be, you know, maybe trying a little bit more of my variety content again. I used to do that. That used to be my primary source, you know. Did a lot of Kingdom Hearts stuff, various RPGs, playthroughs, and stuff like that. I might go a little bit into that. Uh, I might just kind of like slowly build it in rather than, you know, because I have a, this is the secondary channel. The card game channel is my second channel. I have a main channel, uh, HNX basically. Uh, and I'm, I haven't posted there in a long time, honestly, uh, but I'm going to see if I can, you know, revitalize it, maybe. Uh, we're going to probably play things that are, like, not on the, the main channel, but on the secondary channel, we're probably going to do a little bit of, you know, card game adjacent games, you know, like, as far I've actually, uh, played that. I also have, uh, inscription that we need to finish, there's a, a few more things we can do in inscription. And, you know, other card gaming things, I, like, Marvel Midnight Suns, that was recently, um available on humble bundle is basically has cards in there too so i might just do some of those and then slowly transition maybe back into writing i don't know uh, we'll see uh and i'll see if i can keep you posted but if you have any ideas or things that you want to see particularly for me let me know in the comment section down below i really like uh appreciate that any help is appreciate any ideas anything you want to see from your boy i got you and if you want to discuss it more we do have a discord it should be um in the link in the description down below so if you want to join the discord talk about um some ideas and bounce some ideas off each other that would be sick but uh yeah if, uh make sure you subscribe for more updates for these things we just hit 300 recently so thank you so much for that lovely support i greatly appreciate that and uh hey that's gonna be all for me i'll be blasting off and i'll see you soon space cadets